I just want to follow up on my promised video with regards to the saltwater mixing station I talked about on my tank overview video I just did. Um, this is about four years in the making for me when I first started this hobby back in 2015 on my 90 gallon planted aquariums, uh, which you can find in my earlier videos and how crappy those videos are, even though these aren't very good either. But um, I want to give you an overview on this uh, saltwater mixing station and my automatic top off reservoir that I have uh, hooked up here and how it all works and just kind of the components I used. Um, I don't see a whole lot of this on the the internet or YouTube or anything like that and um, Mr. Saltwater Tank TV uses it on his but didn't really give a good description on what he does exactly just more pictures and words about it so anyway here we go first off let's go for the actual how it gets water in the containers itself I have the bulk reef supply seven stage pro system here with 150 gallons per day which is about 1.5 gallons of wastewater per one gallon of RODI water that it makes. Um, pretty simple setup here. I have it going down to my, my work sink here um, and the two drains. I have one for my, for my tank water that gets pumped out of my tank and one for the wastewater for the RO unit here. You can see the black drain line there and the black drain line here that go down to my saddle valve here. I have two saddle valves on my drain. Uh, both work perfectly, uh, no issues there, nothing clogged, no backups of the system, and they drain just like they should. So I get the water source from there as well, and then it follows down, of course, from the reverse osmosis unit up top with the sediment filter in the first stage, and then the two uh, carbon blocks on the second stage there. And then I moves down to the um, DI canisters or the cation anion, which is this cation removes the positive particles, anion removes the negative particles, and then the mixed bed is the mix of both and to get the zero TDS and remove all silicates, nitrates, um, chlorines, chloramines uh, from the water column. So I have it automatically flowing to my container here via bulk reef supply or just a general float valve that's sitting inside there. Um, I drilled that with a uh, half inch drill bit. And as you can see, the ball valve is always on. So as soon as this um, water line gets below where the ball valve activates, it turns on automatically. I also have a T set here you can see where I can just get the RO water uh, on demand uh, just like that. But obviously it's closed because it will run um, if it's open. So move over to the, this is my RO reservoir here. And then I have it connected to a one and a quarter inch um, threaded uh, valve at the bottom there. And then I have, of course, the general, I did reduce it down to three quarter inch, which is a very common size for aquariums. Uh, three quarter inch um, slip by slip ball valve um, to a T. Moving up to the reflow pump there, which is about I think a thousand gallons per hour, which in this case just works works perfectly. Um, then I have it connected to a union on both sides, so I can remove the pump easily uh, for service and maintenance. And then I have, of course, the ball valve to control the flow, moving northward towards uh, the saltwater mixing station, and this basically controls my water flow whenever I want to remove water manually through my three quarter inch braided hose there. But all you do is basically plug it in, turn it on, open the valves up. It flows from the RO unit here, all the way down, up, and fills it just like that. That's all it takes. And then I leave the salt water uh, ball valve closed for whenever I'm filling. Only time if I ever wanna open that up and use um, that portion of the tank from the bottom is if I want to fill a five gallon bucket up uh, salt water uh, on demand. However, uh, in this case, I just have it um, closed always. And then I have this container, which is my salt water. And by the way, I use uh, Fritz's Reef Pro Mix for RPM salt. Um, 
I use that in this container. And this is about, it holds 65 gallons, but as you can see, um, due to the curvature, I really had to limit it to about 55 gallons, or actually in this case, probably 60 total, um, which is fine. Um, I probably could have gone from the top, drilled down, um, but I didn't like the curvature as much uh, on the top as I did the side. So that's kind of what I went with there. So in order for the water to get mixed, I have a simple um, Hydro Corellia 1050 power head in there, mixing the water up. As you can see, it's got some sediment up top. I probably need to remove that uh, via filter, no big deal. Uh, but clears up perfectly. Um, and I have the saltwater RO tubing that it draws from uh, mixed in the back there. That's just a BRS uh, bulkhead, as you could say, uh, going from the tank all the way from the bottom of the tank to the doser. Now the doser is set up pretty easy, and I'll show you that here in just a second how I do my scheduling. But to wrap this part up outside here is obviously the water gets here from the saltwater reservoir, travels through there, and goes up the wall. Uh, it's probably about 50 feet away to my tank. And this thing can draw up to 20 feet vertical, so there's zero issues with that pump, uh, pumping up my probably solid 12 foot ceilings there, or probably 10 foot, all the way across about 50 feet and down another 10 feet to my tank. So it's a, it's a pretty, good, pretty good pump. Um, I recommend any parasolic pump versus any kind of uh, pump you get with the tunes or other electrical pumps. So it works perfectly as well to draw the water. So as you can see, I have this drawing water from the tank and both you see the, the white tube is the automatic top off tube. The blue tube going to the wall is my fresh salt water and the black is coming from the, from the tank going in there to my uh, to the pump to the drain. So let's go to my schedule here and we'll wrap up the video with salt water mixing station. If you guys have any questions, um, about how I did it or the components selected, just let me know. I'd love to help you out. This was confusing for me for a long time. Thanks a lot and see you in a second. All right, guys. Um, I wanted to first bring you to the Apex Fusion page here on how I set up my dosing pumps. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see, just a few parameter checks here. Got my pH at 8.1, salt at 33.1 was right around 1.025. Temperature is right around 78, like usual. Of course, my dosing here on tell me how I'm dosing or when I'm dosing, and my core uh, pump specifications and um, notifications right down here on that module. So let's go ahead and get started. So to first set up your pump, you want to go to your task bar here and hit task. If you don't know which one it is because it's not labeled, go ahead and just hover over it and it'll say task. Um, then you'll go to where it says the dosing section here with the dose pump, you can do additive dosing, the automatic water change, calibration, and manual water change. Of course, we're gonna to try to do, to do the automatic water change. If you wanna do manual water change, that's if say, hey, I wanna do 10 gallons right now, that's where you go. Otherwise, if you wanna do a daily water change, split up into certain increments and time frames of the day, that's what we're gonna do with the automatic water change section. Now you click on that, and basically it just tells you exactly what to do here. Um, as soon as you have the dose get started guide and have completed the initial setup of your dose and calibrated both pumps. Um, otherwise, you see the saltwater reservoir uh, documentation here. It tells you which way the water will flow. On the first pump, it's normal. It goes left to right. But on the second pump, which is the one I used to remove, it goes from right to left. So that's why I have, um, it's kind of counterintuitive, but I have the um, bad water going into the outside and to the um, inside where's, where the drain uh, water goes to the drain. So click next here, and then I'll say, okay, cool, everything's attached, the firmware is good, sounds good. Um, and then I'll simply click the uh, main line there. And then, so on my left pump, I did the add um, which is basically what it just suggests. So I didn't change anything there. I just did dose add. It'll say like dose five underscore one or six underscore one, whatever it is. Um, however, I just wanted to do dose add so I know exactly which pump does what. 
And then same thing with the remove side. This is the right side, and I did dose remove. Um, you can do gallons, liters, millimeters, but I said gallons, and you, I did 0 0.08. So we do 0 0.08. Um, oh, there we go. 0 0.8. 0 0.08 is too little uh, in gallons. So, and then I did it from, I do it in military time here. So 2200, uh, even that's when my lights go out exactly to 23. I did this for till 10 in the morning, which is my, when my lights come on. Um, those are my hours, 2200 to 1000 in the morning. Um, it'll do 0 0.8 gallons uh, per day at that time. And this is basically spells it out, clears day, 0.8 gallons of water would change per day between the hours of 22 and 10. And then that's it. And it'll send. And that is simply all you do. It takes a little bit longer than normal, but it takes, you know, five seconds versus two seconds, like other uh, settings. And that's it. And you go back to the dashboard here, and you can see it'll so say dose add, dose remove. And if you want to go here, you can look at all the specifications of what it's done, at what times exactly. So I guess it splits it up. I didn't really know this until now. Uh, about 42 milliliters every, um, looks like every hour or every 10 minutes uh, throughout the night. <clears throat> so good to know. So that's it. That's the water station there. And then I'm just gonna show you how I have it in the tank itself, uh, how I have the lines ran and why, and then that'll be it. Thanks guys. All right guys, just real quick, I want to show you how I have my lines run. So you can see the black line coming next to the um, UV sterilizer outflow. The black R tube there basically goes into my um, drain part of the sump from the main drain. Uh, it draws water from there. As you can see, it goes down there. And then it goes for my add. I simply have it sitting right there. So I didn't want to reverse those, and I originally I had my ad be on the right side and my draw be on the left, but it was I didn't want any kind of, even though it's small increments, to take out water I just put in. So I have it going, of course, through the system to my drain, to my return area, and then it'll cycle down to the pump, or to the main drain where I want to draw from. So that's kind of how I have it ran. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm really looking forward to additional videos and updates for this tank. I'm um, excited about this one a lot. Looking forward to it, guys. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you like the material. Um, pretty easy. And uh, I hope this is just to be reach out to the common reefers. And all right, guys, that's it. I appreciate you guys' time. Like and subscribe if you want. Love to see if you guys uh, want to see some more videos of mine. Um, I'm pretty uh, common reefer. Uh, I like to nice equipment and I take very meticulous care of my tanks and just trying to reach out to the community and uh, hopefully make an impact in a positive way to help people uh, be successful at reefing. Appreciate it guys. Talk to you soon.